Hello ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anton and I will lead today's webinar about dispatch of complex Motorola networks over control stations in Smart PTT software. You can ask any questions you have on questions tab. I will answer all the questions after the webinar. If you have a microphone, you have an option to raise your hand with a special button and I will unmute you. You will be able to ask your question verbally online and I will answer it. Here is a short description what is Smart PTT software. Smart PTT is a highly customizable application and comes in several variants that provide different set of functionalities for different systems. Interface with radio system can be done via control stations or via IP connection to Mototurbo repeaters. Dispatcher software gives opportunity to control and log the flow of data and voice in radio network, request location of subscribers and monitor the state of repeaters. Also, Smart PTT gives a set of software tools, such as web client and file transfer software, which increase radio network usability and functionality. Smart PTT has functionality that allows it to connect to PBX and gives subscribers the ability to use PBX interconnection from radio network as well. Agenda of today's webinar are listed on this slide. I will tell about control stations and how to configure them. After that, I will describe how to work with different systems via control stations. This will include simple control stations connection, capacity plus without NAI connection, and hybrid connection to NAI networks. Control station is a motor turbo radio di directly connected to a radio server PC. It is used, to uh, used for data and voice interconnection with radio subscribers. Control station uses predefined channels for interconnection and allows dispatcher to use biggest part of motor turbo functionality within radio network without direct IP connection. It is possible to connect up to eight control stations simultaneously to the radio server PC. Each control station requires a USB socket and one dedicated audio channel. Connection cable features USB connector and two audio jacks for input and output lines correspondingly. Audio jacks are marked pink for microphone socket and green for speaker socket of sound card. Data is transferred over USB connection. Sound channel is not required if console station will be used only for data transmission. Thus, to connect multiple control stations to the same PC, radio server must be equipped with multi-channel sound card. Control stations will allow dispatcher to make outgoing calls and listen for incoming private group and all calls. It's also possible to use TMS, telemetry and GPS services as well as job ticketing feature. Also, control stations can be used to organize phone interconnection, SMS gateway, and email service feature. There is no straightforward method to decide which control system fits best for dispatch of specific radio network. Various factors can affect this decision and in different combinations can give different end results. Final decision about control type commonly can be taken only after testing the system or its part in laboratory. Commonly, control stations are used for dispatch of small systems with less than 50 subscribers and low amount of voice channels. For bigger systems, direct NAI connection is preferred option. It allows to use Mototurbo system to its full power. Control station configuration begins with proper CPS settings. Main settings to allow interconnection with control station are cable type, must be set to rear PC and audio in accessory settings and forward to PC via USB in network settings. These settings allow interconnection between radio server and control station. Without them, control station will not work with radio server. To set up interconnection between control station and radio server, you will need to set IP address and ID of radio in radio server configurator. IP address must be set in network settings of radio code plug. Radio ID is set in general settings of CPS. Please pay attention that IP addresses of control stations connected to the same PC must be different, at least in third octet. Also, it's recommended to configure IP addresses such way that they are not taking neighboring subnets. For example, if first station uses address 192.168.10.1, it is not recommended to use address 192.168.11.1 for second station. It can lead to conflicts. To avoid such conflicts, it is recommended to set subnets with a threshold of at least 5. 
So subnets will be 10, 1, 15, 1, 20, 1, and so on. Radio ID in most cases is IRS ID of the whole system, because radio subscribers will need to register to the radio server and the only gateway to the radio server available will be the control station. All the channels programmed in control station must also be reflected in radio server configurator settings. Pay attention to channel zones and numbers. Radio server will not be able to work properly with control station if zones and numbers will be mixed. Checkbox in radio server configurator sets default channel, which will be set on control station upon start of radio server. Dispatcher can manually change channels of control station via radio front panel instead of smart PTT interface. However, unprogrammed channels will be shown on dispatcher interface as double numbers separated with colon. The number before the colon shows a zone, and the number after the colon shows the number of channels in this zone. It is obligatory to set all the groups which will be used by dispatcher. Dispatcher will not be able to call groups which are not reflected on radio server settings. However, it will be possible to hear those groups. To allow dispatcher to make all calls, it is obligatory to create an all call contact in radio CPS and in the radio server configurator. Last tab of radio server configuration considering control stations defines which audio line will be used by control station and which codec will be used. Each control station which will be used for voice transmission requires a separate audio channel. Codec format can, be, can help decreasing network bandwidth requirement between dispatcher and radio server. Each format is followed by information about how much bandwidth it requires in dispatcher to radio server line. Further, I will describe what options will dispatcher and radio subscribers have when working over control station in different Mototurbo topologies. The simplest system topology with control stations is a two-way connection via control station without additional connection with repeater over IP. In this case, control station acts like a gateway to the radio network. Dispatcher uses it as a transmitter to send information into radio network and receives all incoming information through the same control station. This schematic can be used to enter any Mototurbo topology. Main limitation of this system is inability to work simultaneously with a number of channels that exceeds number of control stations. This will be most notable when working with trunking networks. If control station is busy within a call, it will be impossible to receive calls from other radios. To use this schematic in IP side connect network, you will need on, uh, one control station per slot, or use one control station with two channels, one for each slot. To work in Capacity Plus system, you will need to create a full pool of trunking channels on control station. Control station will automatically follow the rules for radios and trunking networks. You must be careful when trying to use this topology for LCP networks. Control station geographical locations must be chosen wisely in this case. If local groups are not used in this system, it will be enough to place control stations anywhere within coverage of any site. If you are going to use local calls, you must have a control station on the site where local calls are used, or it will not be possible to work with those groups. So, for a full coverage of LCP system, more than one radio server can be required. Another option exists for Capacity Plus systems. It is a special mode when all incoming calls and data go through direct IP connection, but all outgoing data and voice will be sent over control stations. This mode does not require an NAI to be enabled on repeaters. In this case, limitations of previous mode are partially resolved. Dispatcher can hear all calls simultaneously independent of amount of control stations available. For outgoing calls and data, you will still need to use control stations. Settings for this system include independent configuration of IP connection to repeaters and control stations configuration. Repeaters connection acts like a control station which receives all calls from radio network. Actual control stations are configured independent from each other and will serve for sending the information into the network. Radio server will automatically handle the available control station fleet, giving dispatcher control over the free control stations when needed. Hybrid systems is a new development, which became possible after NAI was released. 
Network application interface allows third-party applications to connect directly to any MetaTurbo topology over IP connection. Hybrid system allows usage of NAI for data transmission, while voice will still be using control stations. Each group in the system must have a dedicated control station in hybrid solution. One additional control station will be needed for private calls also. So, voice and data flows are separated in hybrid system. It allows to use new options of NAI data in the system without usage of expensive NAI voice licenses. Setting up a hybrid connection with NAI network is a mixture of IP repeater connection and control stations. First step is to configure the network topology which you are going to use. IP set connect, capacity plus or link capacity plus. And to check control stations in the voice column. Control station settings in hybrid mode are mostly the same as for standalone control station connection. You will need to set up IP and ID of control station and the channel to be used for it. Main difference is that you must choose a group for each control station or set it as dispatcher to be used for private calls. Sound settings are totally the same as shown previously. Final step of hybrid configuration will be establishing MNIS and DDMS connections for data transmission. Here we will need to put addresses of the PCs running MNIS and DDMS services. In conclusion, I should say that there is no easy way to decide which dispatching control system to choose. Whether you will need direct IP connection or control station is a matter of discussion. A criteria is the user's experience with the system, and it involves uh, radio subscribers as well as dispatchers. So, in most cases, system must be carefully analyzed. You will need to create a fleet map, account estimated loading on the network, check the bandwidth requirements and financial power of customer. We are always happy, uh, we are always happy to help you with that. If you have any doubts about usage of some functionality in your system, just call us and we will be able to propose you all possible solutions and list all pros and contras. Visit our website smartptt.com to find out more information about SmartPTT software. Follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel, User SmartPTT. If you have any questions, feel free to send email to us on info at smartptt.com or submit your request via submit form on support portal support.smartptt.com. Thank you for your attention.